Hey everyone, so this video is a little different because I've never done a RC car chassis build, but here we are. Um, so I bought this thing like 10 years ago. It's a Kyosho brand. Uh, it's called a Mini Z, and they have many different kinds. This was all wheel drive, but it's outdated where they have the batteries on one side, the motor on the other. I think they've updated it where it's better designed. But uh, I would consider this more of a toy at least in uh, the year 2021 because it's all plastic and stuff like that. It's a good model and all, and but uh, there are better alternatives, of course. Uh, when I bought this, I bought this body kit also by Kyosho, but the wheelbase is too long, so I couldn't use it. This has been sitting in my cabinet for like 10 years doing nothing, so I'm going to use this body on this new uh, chassis here. Before I open this box up here, I want to give a shout out to these guys. First, uh, on YouTube, there's a channel called Beaver's Hobby. This guy's got a bunch of videos on uh, all sorts of drift cars. And you can get into this drift, this uh, scale of drifting for like 60 bucks. I think there's a brand called WL Toys, and they make something called the K989. And so Beaver's and this channel has a lot of videos on these things. So the second channel I found is Garage RC, and this guy actually has this this kit that we're going to look at today but he doesn't have a video on how to build it and I couldn't find any English speaking videos on how to build this I, I found some in Thai and they're pretty good as well but uh, I don't really speak that language so I thought I'd help everyone out and see show you guys how uh, an amateur like me might be able to put this together or fail and maybe this video is going to be edited six billion times because I don't know what I'm doing anyways uh, I found searched through the internet, and so there's a person on Facebook called Chan RC or Chan RC, and he's the person I bought this stuff from. So let's open this thing up and see if I got everything I ordered. It was shipped by DHL, so it showed up really quick. Now a caveat: I uh, spe specifically asked to have all the packaging removed so I don't have to run into any customs problems. It just looks like a bunch of spare parts instead of, you know, something that would be brand new and maybe opened and taxed. Sorry, tax evasion. Send me to jail. I'm sorry. It's not... Okay. <clears throat> Boy. All right. Oh, and he also sent some... Well, never mind. Let's, let's just open this stuff up. All right. Interesting. This There's some actual branded uh, packaging here. Or no, it's the tape that has that brand on it. Okay, so I know nothing about this uh, Merco design. And this is called the Drift Art 2 chassis. This is uh, the seller's extra here, I guess, Chan RC. This is a setup plate. We don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, so nothing else here. So I also ordered a bunch of electronics to make this thing run. The chassis is one thing, and then you still have to, you know, put in all the electronics and stuff. So let's take a look here. This is the, uh, I guess, uh, the manual for the uh, electronic speed controller and the motor. There's a combo there. What is this thing? This is uh, the servo or something? No, this is the motor. 7200 kV, some sort of a cheat sheet on running modes and setting up probably the electronic speed controller. Same here, some sort of codes and firmware and stuff like that. I'm guessing you can probably program this stuff. All right, I'm sure there's many videos on this, team power stuff, but we'll tackle that later. Okay, so this is a servo. No, this is the uh, electronic speed control here. Okay, in fact, uh, let me move the camera closer now. Get a little better light angle here. All right, so yeah, this is uh, some wiring to hook up to the receiver. And uh, this must be the radon speed controller to the motor. Okay. This is the actual motor. It's a brushless motor. And uh, again, it's probably the same thing, a Team Powers thing. We'll get to that later. Here's the steering servo. This one is uh, this model number, AFRC 0211, whatever. Okay. 
Uh, this I didn't know would come with it, but I think it's a programmer or something for that uh, electronic speed controller. You just hook it up and program it just like on a real car. Tune it. All right. So all those were extras. I think all this stuff now... Oh, sorry. This is another extra. This is a gyro. So this can set the uh, response to steering inputs and stuff. You don't necessarily need one if you're a good uh, driver like uh, those YouTube channels are. But uh, I'm not a good driver, so I'll probably have to use that for sure. <clears throat> okay, now I think all this stuff is the actual kit for the chassis made for this. I don't know if Art is the brand or, or what. But anyways, so these are all building tools. Hmm. So, this is nice because you don't have to have your own tools to make this thing. They give them to you. So, the sandpaper here because you might have to sand down some parts, you know, to get a tighter tolerance or smoother or maybe the parts are too tight and they there's too much friction. This is a sanding, <coughs> excuse me, a sanding <coughs> <coughs> sanding emery board super smooth on that side a little less smooth there a bit different kinds different grits so that's really great you know you can sand these things uh, these are the tiny tiny hex wrenches used to uh, put the screws and the bolts and stuff together so this thing is gonna have a lot of tiny parts so I'm using this silicone uh, soldering mat you know, a lot of electronics people, they have these things to solder up their parts, they, little cubbies to put screws. So it's got some fine tweezers, really nice stainless steel, so that's good. And then I would say this is probably the most important, it's a tiny uh, screwdriver, 1.5 millimeter hex, you know, a six-sided hex, so that's good. And the back spins, so you can hold it against your palm and just spin it with your four fingers like that. Alright, so toolkit is included, great to know. Okay, so this is all a bunch of nuts and bolts, of course, and the, some extra belt drives, I guess. This is the belt drive pulley system, or part of it. Suspension parts, springs, different rates. So you want to set up your suspension. In my case, I'm going to go for soft. And then these are the, the ball knuckles for the control linkages for the suspension parts. Uh, pulleys and stuff for the, uh, the drivetrain. And then uh, this is an extra, I think, uh, magnetic body mount kit. So you can mount the plastic bodies with magnets instead of uh, pins, which are a pain to put, pull on and off. So that th this is not part of the kit, by the way. Uh, that's an extra. And then all of the carbon fiber chassis parts are in this bag here. And then for some reason, these uh, plates here for the transmission and motor or in a separate bag. All right, so let me pan up here. So there actually is an online uh, instruction manual. So I'm gonna follow this just to scroll th quickly through it. I'll show you. It seems to be quite intensive. You know, some uh, idiot-proof knowledge here. Do's and don'ts about stuff. Uh, lubricating the bearings, you know, and then step by step of putting all the different components together. So I'm gonna try to follow this as I build it. Granted, I'm not going to show you this. I'm just going to pan the camera down and, sh you know, show you guys me working on the parts. But so hopefully this instruction manual will make sense. It looks like it would, right? It's quite in intensive. It's 35 pages long. Okay, so I went ahead and separated all the uh, nuts and bolts into little clusters so it makes assembly a little easier. These are the sizes that I measured. So you have these two small uh, socket cap bolts, 1.5 millimeter diameter by five millimeter long threads. This is an eight millimeter long threads. Then you have these uh, chamfered uh, bolts where they're two millimeters in diameter, but the overall length is five millimeters, overall length is eight, overall length is 12, and overall length is 16. That's how you measure these type of bolts, by the way. Then you have these button head bolts, they're also all 2 millimeter diameters, but the thread on this is 3.5, 5, 10, and 12. And then you have three different washer types. You have a small thick washer, a medium or I guess large thick washer, and then you have a super thin washer. These super thin washers are used with the bearings. 
So the first thing uh, suggesting to do in the manual is to clean the bearings. And so there are many different YouTube videos on cleaning bearings, but uh, in this case, I just you know put the bearings into this little jar and filled it with kerosene. And it's <laughs> it's been shaken and not stirred for uh, around 10, 20 minutes now. So you'll I just wanted to show you know the fluid itself. It's a little bit dirty, I'm guessing, but it's not super dirty because they're brand new bearings. I think this might be more because the, the bearings might be filled with like a uh, dense grease, but uh, you want to have as little resistance as possible. So we're basically trying to remove all that thick grease. And then after I pull these out of here, I'm going to use this little hair dryer, or in this case, it's like a heat shrink dryer, and just so it doesn't rust. And after this, I'm going to, you know, fill in the uh, bearings with some really thin uh, oil, some sort of thin oil lubricant, so it pro provides very little resistance. So after I uh, drained out the kerosene, I just dumped them on this tissue paper, and then I used that heat heat blower to get the bearings hot so I know all the volatile uh, substances have uh, wicked off. And now I decided to use this, uh, you know, sewing machine oil because it's super low vis viscosity, you can see. It's it's not quite watery, but it's definitely pretty thin, you know, so. And I don't intend to run this outside or in the rain. It's just too small of an RC car to do that. None of the electronics are protected anyways, unless I waterproof them. So I'm just going to let these bearings sit here for while I build something, and then I'll uh, take them out of the oil and wipe them down. Okay, so I went and separated all the parts out because there's just so many. I think it would be faster in the long run if you actually separate all the parts. Uh, and also I want to talk about other tools. You know, it came with these straight stainless tool uh, tweezers, which are great, but when you're picking up little parts, it's always easier just to have a, a angled uh, set of tweezers, you know, so it's just... This is easier to pick up stuff instead of holding it straight like that. And then these are actually locking ones in case you need to uh, hold, clamp something down for whatever it might be. So I'm going to utilize these. And then um, it's always good to have digital calipers because you want to measure the, the thickness of the bolt and the length of it. And also I just want to talk about these Allen wrenches that came with it. So let's, in case you lose these things. So the very small one is around 0.7 millimeters. It's a 0.7 millimeter hex. And then the larger one, it's a 0.9 millimeter hex. So 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and then the big one is a 1.5. All right, so those are the hexes you gotta have. It comes with them again, but just in case you lose them. Okay, so I also, um, for parts that I don't intend to ever remove, <coughs> like say the, the chassis spacers and stuff, I'm going to use a very low strength uh, Loctite. So don't use the blue stuff. These screws are so small you'll probably strip stuff out. And it might actually not even be smart to use Threadlock at all. The instructions don't mention it, but uh, I figured this is going to be vibrating a lot. So I'm going to use low strength on certain screws. All right. So the first thing, another thing, plastic tweezers, they're good at not scratching things, but they're so slick, I find them absolutely worthless for most instances. They generally, you hold something and the thing just flies off into oblivion, so I would not recommend you use plastic tweezers for most things. I just use them to paint stuff. So I'm going to stick to metal tweezers. So the first assembly is the uh, rear suspension um, uh, frame. So this is uh, the layout here, what we're going to use. And it's using these five millimeter, the thread is five millimeters long. Let's just make sure. Yeah, 4.5, five. It seems to be only one of the shorter versions here. And then the diameter is 1.5 millimeters. So we're going to use two of these things. But uh, you'll notice here, you can adjust the, the you know where the shocks are going to be mounted so okay there you go so anyways let me put this thing together and it's using the 0.7 millimeter um, hex on these little ball ball ends here so I know these ball ends I don't want to ever remove them from their studs so I'm gonna thread lock those with the very low strength again I'm going to go with the middle setting for now. 
I see. So this um, this is a very tight fit here. I'm literally threading this uh, aluminum suspension suspension mount here. So that's interesting. A little bit tight, but you can definitely work through it. Yeah, this one I guess I will add a little thread lock, why not? So it seems like what's missing is a small set of pliers. So just use my cheap ones here. Just finger tighten stuff. These things are so small you can strip out the threads. So that's another reason why maybe thread lock might be advisable in certain instances so you don't, you know, rest, run the risk of stripping out the threads. Okay. Now, these black, black pieces, <coughs> they all seem to be 3D printed plastic. Uh, I think it's probably a powder powder printer just based on the fact that the surface looks kind of like rough uh, ceramic. So this is definitely a case where you don't need thread lock because it's plastic itself. It has enough grip. And you definitely don't want to over tighten these because you'll easily strip out the threads. For some reason it's showing that three of these thick washers here are, are used to mount this thing. You notice on washers there's a smooth side with uh, rounded corners. That's how it's punched out through the metal. And then the other side is rough. I always have the smoother side uh, facing the uh, aluminum object so it doesn't gouge the, the surface. Hmm. Now mounting suspension points. The more vertical the uh, shock is, the more body roll you'll, you'll have, which might be something you want. The more angled or horizontal the shocks are, the less body roll. So it's, uh, I guess, up to you if you know how realistic you want your drifting to be. If you want it to body roll quite a lot and look really dramatic, you know, try to make the uh, shocks vertical. But if you're going for more racing style, right, you want to um, probably have it more horizontal. I'm gonna just pick the third hole. Let's see how this works out. So it's actually nice that these holes are a little bit tight because it kind of holds this, the bolt from just falling out. It's a tiny finger tight. So this part is done. Seems like uh, you know the black plastic and the brass uh, suspension ball mount are on the same side. So now we're going to the drive shafts. So the instruction manuals, they're showing a lot of black bolts and a lot of black nuts, but this kit, everything's gone stainless. All the bolts are stainless now, so it's a little bit different than the um, instruction manual that I'm referring to here. And also the instruction man manual is showing this part to be uh, metal, but now it's 3D printed plastic, which is a little bit concerning. I'm not sure if I like that. I would much prefer, you know, metal dog bones. Okay, so you have this metal thing here and that has to slide into the big hole of this. There we go. I have to actually insert this thing into this cup and now I have to try to get that shaft through both holes. So this is going to be a challenge, especially on camera. What do you know? That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. So that that little rod is holding, you know, this thing in place now. So that is why there's an O-ring, and this O-ring is going to trap that rod now. Okay, so that's what's going on. 
So we're going to now assemble the drive shaft into the uh, suspension upright. And I noticed that this little black uh, suspension upright has a staggered uh, black piece here. So I think it would logically make sense that this hole is closest to the inside of the car. So the ball joint doesn't collide with the wheels or anything like that. It's a little different than the photo here in the instruction manual. I don't know what this thing was on the original part, but it's gone now. But it looks like this hole again is staggered towards the drive shaft. So I want to make note, there's a super thin set of washers in this kit. Uh, sorry if I can't focus, but it's, it's the only size of this thinness. You'll know what it is when you see it. So we take the drive shaft, we're going to put the flange towards the, the black piece here. Then we're going to slide on that super thin washer. Alright, then this black piece here with the, uh, oh, I have it backwards. So again, I want to have this hole going towards the drive shaft, closer to that side. And then the bearing again with the flange on the outside. Sorry if I'm losing focus here. There we go. And then this is the lock nut to hold the wheel on. And also keep this thing from falling apart for, for the meantime. So now we're going to put the lower uh, suspension together for the rear end of the car. Um, I want to make note that there are two sizes of uh, pivot pins. There's four of these really long ones, and then there's eight of these small ones. We're, we're going to use the small ones, so put the long ones away for now. Now the pl plastic parts being 3D printed, you might have to sand the uh, edges here and polish them a little bit, just so you get enough of a... Sorry. You know, you don't want to have too much play like this but you don't want it so tight that the suspension doesn't move, right? So, uh, you know, I started off with the, the rough grit sanding stick here, sanded that down, and then I moved my way up to the uh, finer black polish here, and then uh, this gray one. And then if you really want to, this lighter gray one here, and then finally, I think the white one is the very smoothest. So it's probably overkill because I almost feel like as these parts uh, move constantly over time, they'll probably polish each other, right? The two plastic surfaces. So, okay, so you wanna have the flat side of the suspension arm, not, not the concave side, facing the upper tall side of this thing. So basically like this. All right, so we'll take this little pivot uh, pin, run it through. Okay, so that's a loose fit, but I think later the screw bolts are going to trap that pin from sliding out, so it's not a big concern right now. And then uh, that uh, drive thing we put together earlier, it's going to go like this. And it doesn't matter which side, because I think this is mirrored, so it's something like this. So again, uh, you know, you want to start with maybe a couple light strokes of the rough grit, and then eventually polish it super smooth. So I went and kind of pre-did that for you guys, so you don't have to bear me doing that. So now this is a friction fit. So there you go. It's a little tough, but it kind of has to be because otherwise it would fall out when the, the car is running. So I used the back end of the tweezers to push that through to the other side. I'm assuming the holes are aligned. There we go. So yeah, th these ends have to be tight, otherwise the pin will just fall out, right? So the key thing is, if I flex this vertically, there's no movement going on. But obviously, in this fashion, the suspension arm will work. So that's, that's the goal, as far as the polishing of the plastic pieces go. Alright, so this is what it finally looks like. And then the inside is going to go like this, right? Into the, the, the drivetrain. Okay, so I discovered that there have been some changes here in the design. Um, essentially, they've gone to a toothed belt. 
if you look at these instructions, it has a smooth belt there, and then it has this smooth pulley system, but those are no longer in this kit. Let me uh, pan down here. So, if you, this lower pulley is now replaced by this thing. It's a tooth belt cog system, so I think I have to sandwich these things together here. So this um, screw is going to go in through this side here. And then it's going to screw in to the small holes on this side. And it's going to trap this uh, aluminum you know, piece here. And also, you'll notice that uh, you know there's a groove running through these pieces, and I'm assuming that those have to be aligned properly, right? So you want the, the grooves to be on the same uh, plane. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I don't see why I wouldn't do that, right? Having a hard time threading in to the other side. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you'll see now that the uh, bolt is going, you know, in the sm the larger of these three holes. So I'll flip it around and do the same on this side. All right. So now they have all six in. Just finger tighten that one. I don't think it would work loose because they're threading into plastic. Okay, so that's going to go into the transmission later. Now back to um, this instruction manual, right? So this is going to become this piece here. And then in the same bag, you had the tooth, this tooth pinion. And in that same bag, there are three grub screws. There are the larger of the grub screws if you separate all your pieces separately. So I went and put them in already. Okay, so let's get to the side plate. Actually, you have to scroll upwards here in the instructions. So these side plates have a smooth side and a rough side. So let me show you here. This is the rough side. This is the side that wants to face outwards. This is the smooth side. This is that wants to face inwards. The reason why you want the pretty side on the inside is because the bearing has a flange and the bearing wants to rest on the smoothest side possible. Otherwise your alignment's gonna be off, right? So this is the inside we're looking at here. All right, so that one goes like that. So this carbon plate, I basically took the longer of the uh, little button head screws, this being the uh, Let's see, the two by five millimeter long one. Hopefully you can see, I'm basically maximizing the thread that's grabbing the piece of plastic. And so it's, this has to be the longer of these two short screws. So again, it's the two by uh, five millimeter one. Okay, there's no need to tighten this because the motor, you might mount it low for lower CG, mount it high for high, higher body roll. Okay, so now this drive shaft here, this pulley shaft, goes in from the outside. There's a small bearing that is on the inside surface. What I don't know is which way this pinion goes, if it goes this way or that way. I don't know if it makes a difference. The only difference would be the access to the grub screws, but uh, I don't think it really, you know, the thing's central anyway, so. Okay, so you'll see it's centered no matter what, which way you do it. So it's nice to know that there's an extra tooth belt here in case the first one wears out. Okay, let's pop this on this. All right, it's pretty easy, pretty loose. So again, the flanges of the bearings are on the inside 
and the inside is the smoother side of the plastic. Okay, so something like that. Now uh, this is this little carbon fiber cross brace and I'm gonna mount it to the top here, right here, and I'm using the longer of these short button head screws. So these are the two millimeter by five millimeter long button heads. Okay, you don't wanna really tighten anything until it's on the chassis. So I'm just gonna get it roughly, you know, still kinda of loose, I wanna play. All right, so now, that uh, suspension uh, brace here. Uh, again, I'm using the longer, the two by five millimeter button heads, and that's gonna screw in right here. All right, so keep loose. So that is the uh, transmission assembly, and I haven't tightened the pinion yet. I'm gonna do it later, All right? And then this is the motor mount, okay. The flanges of the bearings are on the inside. Okay. Now it's time to uh, assemble that transmission and the lower suspension arms to the chassis. So it's an interesting sandwich process here. We have the main chassis plate here. These uh, suspensions are going to rest on top of it. And note, this little nub is forward. It's not. It's not in the back. And then. On the bottom, this little carbon piece here, oh, this direction, sorry, the pointed nose goes forward, so this is flush. And then we're using these uh, chamfered screws. These are the uh, M2 by 8 length. And so they're going to feed in from the bottom here. So then there's enough thread here that uh, will screw in to this transmission piece. Okay, so that's basically what's going on. I'm just going to slide this one here. This I am going to tighten down. I'm just slowly torquing each one a little bit more so it, you know, torques down evenly. Okay, so that's what's going on here. The next thing to do is to make the upper links for the rear suspension. So what we have are these little, uh, you know, ball ends here. And then I just have some little electronics clippers to clip those off. And then we're going to use this little 1.2 by 8 millimeter threaded rod which is quite small indeed, it's this little piece here. <coughs> so you could, you know, just with a tight grip, you know, slowly thread that on. If you don't clamp too hard with pliers, you could use that. But I'm gonna try, <coughs> excuse me, this method out. I have a little uh, mini drill here, a hand drill. And uh, I'm gonna actually clamp it into this drill thing here. Tighten that down a little bit. So now I, I can just hopefully sorry if it's out of focus. Oh, sorry. Well anyways, there. It's just an easy way to start the thread. Okay, so once that's done, there we go. So this thing, eventually this metal rod does bottom out. So you don't have to be too precise. It's, it's asking for a one millimeter gap. And now that I have the extra traction of this one, I can probably do this one by hand. So let me uh, start this thing. Okay. 
So it wants a one millimeter gap here exposed. So there's two sides of a caliper, by the way. This is to measure stuff like this. But if you try to measure the insides, that's when you use these two prongs here. So I'm gonna literally spread those prongs in this gap here, right? 0.99. Uh, essentially you want to have, you know, the plastics on the same plane. So this thing and this thing want to be horizontal. Okay. So then it's suggesting now that we, uh, pop in these little, uh, ball joints into one side. So I'm going to actually use these pliers cause I think it's going to fly off. So I'm going to clamp the, uh, threaded side here. Okay, we'll bring this back. We have the ball joint from very early on. I'm gonna pop that on here. There we go. So then you have to remember to have it opposite and then, then I'm going to thread this into the top of the, the upright here. Don't tighten it too much. All right. So that's you want to make sure that the actual dog bone is in the transmission. Otherwise it's not going to work properly. So make sure you get that dog bone in there. All right. So yeah, if I did this again, I would add these arms to this before this thing is attached to that. Okay, so that's keeping the upright in place now. So here we're going to assemble the rear shock. So this is the assembly uh, view here, the exploded view. And uh, luckily this long threaded uh, piece has the ability to take this wrench. I do want to mention there's two sizes here. There's a short one of this threaded rod which was the control arm link but we're using the longer uh, one because it's a thicker diameter and it matches the hole of this shock better so it's definitely the longer bigger bigger one all right so let me put the tool into this thing into the grub screw it's a hard fit but it does work and then I'm gonna thread into the end of the shock this little ball pivot piece here. And I'm actually going to start it with my fingers. It seems to be easier to do. And then I'll use the wrench until it bottoms out in that plastic. Alright, so take that wrench out. Now this screws into this plastic piece. And what's weird again is, uh, I pan up to the manual here. The manual shows it's an aluminum piece, but now they switched over to black plastic, so probably to save on costs, which is kind of a letdown. You know, this this thing was pretty expensive, so I kind of want it to be metal, if it can be. Anyways, <coughs> I'm screwing it all the way on to the thread. Okay, so I'm gonna mount the shock to the, this thing. So this uh, black plastic piece slides into this piece up here on the this uh, earlier assembly. So now I'm using this uh, 1.5 by 5 long uh, socket cap screw. And that's going to attach it to this suspension arm. I already know I'm going to have to probably move all these suspension points around. I think it's a bit off. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want this shock to be too tight that it causes stiction. You know, it just wants to be kind of loose, right, like that. So what's going to keep this shock from falling out of this piece is uh, another 1.5 by 5 and then I have these two washers on it. I have the small thick washer and then the big thick washer underneath it. Okay, so hopefully you can see small thick washer and then a big thick washer and then that screws into the top of that shock I just put in and it traps it. Alright, so that's bottomed out. Now you notice it's way too uh, high, right? But if you just un unscrew it now, you'll see that rod 
is lowering the suspension arm. Okay. Obviously, if this is too long though, it's going to fall out. So that's what makes me think I have to probably move these pivots down to the lower lower series of holes here, these, and then possibly maybe move this, I don't know, I'll move it around, but uh, it's an adjustable suspension, which is pretty cool, right, ride height or, you know, spring tension can be adjusted pretty easily on the fly. You can even move it with your fingers, that little black plastic uh, nub down there, so if you don't have a, a tool, you can still do it by hand. Okay, so those are the, the rear shocks. And now we're on to the uh, steering knuckles here. So this is the uh, assembly view here. So we're going to take this bearing, put the flange over on this side, press that into the uh, inside of the steering knuckle, put this little thin washer on there, this washer bearing, bearing washer, okay. Press the uh, other bearing from the outside so the flange is going there. Okay. And then just uh, secure it with the uh, nut that holds the wheel on so this thing doesn't just fall out. Okay, so that's simple enough. Now, the challenging part is putting the control arm balls onto this thing. So it's the larger of the hex keys. And then uh, this one single ball goes on the bottom here. I like to, I'm gonna start with my fingers just to try to keep it aligned with the hole. And then use the key. Not too tight, because again, it's, you can strip the threads. That's probably good enough. Okay, so another single ball here. This is for the steering link, and that's gonna go right here. Okay, so the top of the knuckle is this long long end here, and this, this top actually gets a double ball because two links are going to go to this thing. One for camber and one for caster. So again, this one I have room to start with my fingers. Okay, so those are the two finished uh, steering knuckles. So now it's time to work on the uh, front suspension and uh, again there's some design changes going on. Here in the manual you'll see the arm here. They went and changed it to a rectangular uh, arm on the end because I think they wanted more material because maybe here was breaking too much because this piece would you know, thread in. So with more, <laughs> more material here I think it's uh, going to be stronger so it's a good thing. So I have to go and add this uh, larger of the longer threaded rods here, the one that actually takes the uh, small Allen key. And then I honestly don't know which hole I'm supposed to put it in, this one or that one. This is like a steering stop from my what I understand. So in fact, maybe I could do this. Well, it is towards the end on this, this picture here. So I'm gonna put it in here, I guess. True, I can adjust that later. So then, Another thing, we have to have the, uh, this time the long pivot rods here, this, the longest of the uh, pivot pins is going to be used for these uh, suspension arms here. So that's just pretty loose fit. Now let me angle the camera down here. So the way the suspension works is it's trapped within three, the carbon plates. So you'll notice this piece here in the middle. I have it kind of assembled with some screws, but they give you two pieces because you're supposed to modify this and they give you an extra one in case you screw up. But basically this pivot pin has to fit within this groove here, and right now it doesn't. So I have to sand away a little bit of the carbon fiber right, at, right here and here. <coughs> so that's why they gave you all these piece, pieces of sandpaper. So you can uh, fold it up and then just sand it down until this thing fits, the rod itself. But you still also have to uh, sand a little bit of this black plastic to fit in this groove here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, do it opposite the instructions and try to get this rod to fit this groove first, and then I'll worry about the plastic after. All right, so um, you could probably just use a nail file as well, but. 
I took some sandpaper and put it on this uh, piece of steel. This is actually like a, a Gundam model kit uh, sander. You just use double sided tape. And then I'm just going to go in here and uh, sand it away a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put in the ball ends into the, each of the suspension arms. And so you have to take the smallest threaded rod there and then put it onto the, uh, you know, the ball end. And you have to leave five millimeters of space here, uh, five millimeters of thread. And then at first you might think this hole is too big, but actually this thing threads in way inside. So you just put it in the end of the suspension arm. And it turns out <coughs> that thread is so long because you can adjust how far in this goes. It's about four millimeters of adjustment. So on this one, I, I pretty much bottomed it out and then backed it off half a turn. And that's how the, the closest setting. But uh, you'll see here, you know, it's much further out. So you can adjust, you know, the offset of the wheel. So that's pretty cool, I think. For now, I'll just, uh, I guess, bottom them both out, make them even. Actually, you know, with the calipers now, I probably want to measure the overall distance. 20.4 well, yeah, 20.4 yeah, 20.35 so those are pretty much even right? so now, um, you know <coughs> it's really easy to sand through carbon fiber so you gotta be really delicate I like literally two or three strokes of this pretty much made the, the gap work here for uh, these suspension arms. So don't go ham fisted into this thing or you'll, well I guess you have the other plate to work with but for some reason this one is very loose with no side play. I couldn't get this one to drop loosely uh, but it's got a little bit like a half millimeter of play maybe so I just stopped but anyway so this is going to get sandwiched in I just temporarily bolted these two pieces together so I'll take these off okay so now I have to uh, mount this top trapping plate over those suspension arms but at first I thought I didn't have this little brass insert because it's so close in size with all these over here I'll put them two side side by side but one of them if you look closely enough it's just slightly bigger and so that one is used the bigger one is used for the carbon plate here so it has to go into this middle hole here so I'm just gonna put it down on this and just press down now silicone this mat is not helping the cause so I have to do it on a hard surface off camera here so I uh, had to take a tiny little uh, hammer hammer this in. Be mindful though, this is brass, so if you hammer it too much, you'll actually deform this thing. So I just lightly tapped it in, and it's just like flush on this side here. Uh, you don't want to exceed it because it's going to be carbon on carbon, so the, the, the little bit of brass that sticks out will stick up above on the top surface. Okay. So now on the, the front here, this is one of those uh, flat capped uh, 5 millimeter, 2 millimeter diameter by 5 millimeter uh, length. So the flat capped again is like the weird uh, chamfered. That's what I'm looking for, the word chamfered. So that type of screw. Okay. And then these other ones are the same, but they're. Uh, the eight millimeter long versions. So I'm gonna put a little thread lock on these because I don't see a real reason to have these ever move. Okay, so that aluminum 10 millimeter standoff. Okay, so we're going to finish off this section here. Um, the instructions were calling for short bolts to come in from the bottom through the carbon fiber here. But that makes no sense, you know. If you put a 5mm bolt here, there's barely enough thread to catch the standoff. So I'm ignoring the thing and uh, I'm going to go with these. These are the uh, 
M2 by uh, 12. So you'll see if it goes through the carbon, you still have enough of the threads, you know, catching this uh, 10 millimeter standoff. So I'm going to put a little thread lock on there because I don't expect to really change this ever. It's not adjustable. Then you have these carbon plates where you have to put in the smaller uh, brass nuts here on these two holes. And then uh, when you mount it, I'm using the 5mm long button heads. And you, there's a specific direction for these. You want to have the brass uh, <coughs> as close to the middle as possible. So what I mean, you have two brass inserts, you want to have them inwards. You don't want this thing out here, so you want to make sure it looks like this. Okay? It doesn't have to be tight because uh, it's going to just get assembled to something else. So let's move on to the servo now. So there's a carbon plate, and again, you have to insert two of the small brass uh, nuts. And this side is perfectly flat, but this side had a, a recessed hole, and so I you know, I used a, a screw method where I sucked in the, uh, the brass. I put this in here, screwed on the nut, and then I just tightened it until the brass inserted into the carbon recess. So you still uh, can see that there's a bunch of brass showing, but most of the knurling is inside the carbon, right? So it doesn't spin out. The next thing you want to do is you want to take these smaller standoffs here, and they are 8 millimeters long. And uh, I'm using like the five millimeter long button heads, and you want to just loosely fit them into these slots. And these are where the servo is going to mount to. So the pointy end shoots forward, or it's forward on the vehicle. So I have to feed in, you know, the servo like this, you know, a cable here, and then uh, the servo motor also wants to be forward. Okay. So now I'm going to use uh, those 5 millimeters, or actually I'm going to use the shorter ones because it's a servo. It's not going to be under as much uh, strain or whatnot. So, but I am going to use some thread lock because I don't really expect this servo to ever have to move. It shouldn't move, otherwise your steering is going to get messed up. This one short screw. down. Now so the reason why those standoffs are loose is because you can actually slide it a tiny bit back and forth through this. Alright, I hope you can see that. So I don't think it really matters to be honest where, with you where it's located here. I just want to have it as equal on each piece of the carbon as possible. So something like that before I tighten it down. The reason why it doesn't matter is this entire carbon piece is going to slide within the frame of the the car, the, the rest of the the rest of the RC car here. All right, so finger tighten again. Okay. So <clears throat> open this thing up. So now this carbon plate is going to feed into here. That's why the pointy end is forward. You got to remember to keep the cable here. You know, don't shoot it out the bottom or you'll have a hard time getting it back in through the uh, thing. So, now what's going to hold this plate in place are these two little holes here. And so you want to use a smaller diameter, this little uh, 1.5 by 5 socket cap. This this type of screw here. And I'm going to put a little thread lock on this because it's going into those brass inserts. Right, like that. If it's metal on metal contact, then uh, a very thin thread lock, uh, a weak thread lock will easily, you know, break loose. But I also don't want this servo to be sliding around, so, you know, which will obviously affect my steering. Okay, so I'll need to tighten this because, again, I don't know where it's supposed to be located yet. <coughs> Sorry. When I get a dry throat, I cough. I don't know why, but it's always the case. Okay, so now let's talk about the servo steering horn. There's three of them in the package. 
And the only difference between the three is the diameter of this hole that fits onto the servo, because different servo brands have different size uh, uh, rotary heads, I guess. So for mine, it's the largest one. I already went ahead and pre-installed one of the small brass rivets here, and then it's using the 1.5 by uh, 8, uh, the longer of the small socket cap screws. Okay. Now, I figured out an easier way to install these. You know, this thing was an L-shaped hex key, which makes no sense because you're just trying to work in a, an axial motion like this. So I just took some clippers and it clipped off that other short end, and then it made inserting these a whole lot easier, you know, just doing that. So I went ahead and did that already. In learning from my lesson from doing the rear uh, suspension arms, I'm going to put the suspension, uh, the steering links on right now. Because if I put them on here, like the directions say, the directions say do this after, but it's going to be hard to get it in there, right? So I'm going to just put them on this thing now. It does seem like these, uh, these things uh, have a smaller and a larger hole. This is the smaller side, I think, and that's the larger side. So logically, the larger side wants to be pressed onto the ball earlier. Okay. Now, this is just a temporary mount because I haven't zeroed this servo yet. I need to actually turn it on with my uh, transmitter to zero it. So this is just to like uh, keep it in place and hook up the uh, suspension links to it later. So I'm not going to tighten this thing right now. Okay, so... We're now at the point where it's supposed to look like this. Okay. So now we get to the point where we're going to install this front half to the rear half of the, the chassis. <coughs> so here we are. The rear half of the chassis is on top of the front half. You know this because you can see here in the full forward position it keys into that carbon plate. But it's it can slide back and forth because it's got these two holes here. So, let's see here. You need to have these two longer aluminum standoffs. And you need to have... These are 2x12 uh, chamfered, chamfered bolts. And the reason being is underneath here, you'll see this is a chamfered hole. Right, so I'm going to feed those in there. Hold that in place. I'm not sure if I, I don't think I'm going to thread lock this because um, if I have to adjust this, the length of the wheelbase, it'll just be easier if, if the thing is not thread locked. Okay. So that's what, uh, by loosening this thing, you can, you know, make it a super long wheelbase or super short. Okay, so the next part here is this uh, top chassis plate, and uh, you have to insert the smallest of those brass inserts again to the extremities of the holes, the four furthest away holes, and uh, I inserted them from the bottom upwards, so the brass is sticking out the top, okay? And then I'm using the uh, longer button heads here, so they would be the uh, M2 by 5 Mental note also, this carbon plate, the top, at least on the instructions, it shows this chamfered is on the top, whereas the bottom here is totally flat, you see? So you want to have the open chamfer on the top surface or facing you. So this thing goes here. Alright, now the tricky part. These two carbon pieces come together like this, but there's a there's an air gap. Well, hopefully I can show you. So the instructions are saying you have to put two of those large washers in between these two pieces of carbon to fill up that gap. Now the weird thing is, I only have two of these large washers left. So it's basically either missing two washers or the kit, or the instructions, again, they're out of date. Maybe some, uh, 
<coughs> maybe some design changes occurred or something later on. But luckily, I just happen to have a couple extra M2 washers from uh, you know other hobbies. So I'm gonna just use the extras I have from elsewhere. But if you don't have these type of washers, you might want to go ahead and order some now. All right. Um, so going through two pieces of carbon and these two washers, you need a relatively long uh, bolt. Unfortunately, we're running out of long bolts here. Hmm. There's not no choice really, except for the this button head that's uh, five millimeters long. Oh boy, so I might have to uh, edit this because I, I don't know if I'm going to get this done properly. Oh, come on, maybe. What do you know? Okay, so I used the tweezers to hold those two washers. They're now sandwiched in there. Mm, trying to find the hole in the bottom piece of carbon. Uh, I see, it's because it's pivoted. Alright. So that that wasn't enough threads. It just wasn't. It screwed like a quarter turn. So I need to have a longer bolt, I think, running down in here, I think. It's just, it's too short. Huh. But uh, there are no other longer bolts. So this is another concern. I don't know what the deal is here. Yeah, see, look, I, I unthreaded it and only that much is showing. So that's simply not good enough. So I'm gonna have to take this out. And luckily I have a bunch of other M2 bolts, but this, this five millimeter long one isn't good enough. Uh, I'm thinking it needs to be like more like eight or 10 millimeters long. Okay, so luckily I have a couple other uh, M2 uh, socket cap bolts laying around. Granted, these are black. But this worked on the other side, so it's a six, six and a half. I guess it's meant to be six millimeters long as far as the thread goes. Okay, so I, here I managed to put in those two uh, washers, but they're too, th they're too thin. You see, the carbon in its relaxed state, it doesn't want to be down there. It just wants to hang out there. So I think I need a, more spacers in there. I want the carbon to not flex because then the chassis will be under tension. Okay, so luckily I had these little plastic washers sitting around and these are um, one millimeter thick washers. I think truthfully, ideally 1.5 millimeters would get it spaced properly, but uh, I did put these in. You can see maybe it's a little bit, you know, canted downwards. But I'm gonna just leave it as it is right now. I can always take it apart later. So, so be mindful. You might need to have some extra washers or spacers, and you're probably gonna have to have an extra long, a longer screw of an M2 variety. So, okay. So that's that part is done. Okay. So it's kind of weird that. Uh, oh, I see. I think some screws are missing here because you know it's, the chassis is doing that. But we'll get to that later. Next we have the battery retaining uh, clips here. So they're basically built, built on these aluminum standoffs. And in this case, there's two different sizes, these short ones or uh, these medium ones. It really, de I think, depends on the size of your battery pack. But this one is the uh, around eight millimeters long. So I use the uh, M5 screws again, and I just pre pre-attach them to these. I don't have a battery pack yet, so I'm not too concerned about this, but I'll just put them in here so you know what uh, needs to be done. So I'm gonna use M5's top and bottom. All right. So the next thing it's asking for is a carbon fiber plate to go here. Uh, I assume it's for like uh, body mounts and stuff like that. So I'm gonna use the M5, I mean the M2 by five millimeter long button heads again. <clears throat> Going right into the plastic of that uh, transmission housing.
So again, that can be loose because I don't even know about the body yet. That's kind of an afterthought later on. Okay, so now we're going to do the front shock. <laughs> and it's important that you do the front shock before you add the suspension links. I just want to mention that the rear shocks have longer springs and the front shocks have shorter springs. So I'm going to use the thinnest uh, wire so it's the softest setting. I went ahead and added that the longest of the grub screws into this plastic again. Be mindful on the other side where I did it and I blew right through that plastic because I wasn't careful. So yeah, be mindful of that. Luckily I could I backed it out. But anyway, so after that is done, it screws into this black plastic lower shock thing. I'll screw that all the way in. The spring goes on this. And then you got this little uh well, I'm not sure what you a cup. Something that retains a spring. Okay. Now this you have to do ahead of the time before you mount on the car. This is one of those 1.5 by 5 millimeter long uh, socket cap bolts and that goes through this cup here. And it rests against the flat surface of that. Okay, so let me get that in there. Okay, now that you have the lower shock assembly, you have to sc screw this bottom part to the suspension arm. And so that's why you got to do this before you add the suspension links because it gets trapped behind the chassis here. So to screw it on, you need one of these 1.5 by uh, 5 millimeter long things, socket cap bolt. So that goes through there, no washers or anything. Get the arm down like this. I guess I can add the spring later if it falls off. You'll see that that hole is really close to the to the chassis, so, okay, so, not tight, of course, because it has to have some free play. So now, you gotta jam that up into the hole of this carbon fiber top plate. Okay, so there, see how it goes up and down? And that uh, cup thing we did earlier, this, is what's gonna trap it so it doesn't fall through that carbon fiber hole. Okay, so by adjusting this thing, you see the suspension arm going up and down. You can adjust the ride height really quick and easy with that. So that's, that's a cool feature, I think. I am also noticing, I think, the steering stops may be in the wrong location. It's hard to say right now, but yeah, I don't know actually, maybe not. See, it stops the, the thing from moving. Actually, let me add the links here, the suspension links. So the first two were already attached to this servo arm here, right? So let's get this out here and attach it to the steering link here. Let's go the other side. Okay, so these are short uh, steering links or whatever suspension links. There's a four millimeter gap, four millimeter of thread showing there, and that's going to go onto the lower lower ball here. So it goes to the top. Now I have to press it down to the second one. Okay, so there it is. So now I have to add a ball pivot. To the brass insert that is on this carbon plate. So we got this. I don't know which one to go to, so I'm just gonna go with uh, the outer one. Oh, so here's a problem. Yeah, so this brass insert, it's not very, uh, it's not a good design. It just went right through the carbon hole. The hole is not tight enough. So, boy, that's a problem, right? It's, it's supposed to stay right here, but it just went right through. Right, so that's, that's an issue. I, I don't know a solution to that. I, I guess you'd have to add some epoxy into around that brass pivot, I mean the brass nut, and then enter in the carbon. But ideally, 
a simple solution would be a longer threaded ball thing and then you have a nut on the underside of the uh, carbon so it can't pull upwards but uh, right now that's that's what's happening so I don't know if I can even put this arm on here because I think it's just gonna push right through again yep it did all right well let me uh hopefully the other one will not push right through and then pray this doesn't blow through nope that just pushed the the brass nut right through the carbon again so this is a pretty poor design there's nothing backing the the brass thing from you know popping through it would have been better to not even have the brass insert and just have a longer thread on this ball and then you capture the other side with a, a stainless steel nut of some sort oh boy what the heck man it's very frustrating so well now you guys know maybe you guys can think of a good solution and leave a comment but let's try on the other side let's see if that pushes through I need the shorter shorter link here All right, so that one at least stayed in place, so that's good. Okay, so that goes to the bottom. So now this longer link has an eight millimeter gap between the, the black plastic. So that's gonna go on the top ball of this uh, steering knuckle. Okay, and then it's gonna go here. All right, so this is what allows you to pull this thing back to adjust the caster this this angle here oh boy so I don't know what to do about this side if I can't keep these things from falling out these two well this suspension link is just gonna have a problem right I ended up crazy gluing these things in so I just put some crazy glue on a piece of uh, paper I put a toothpick through this this brass thing, I rolled it in the crazy glue, and then I very quickly put it on the bottom of this thing and pressed it against a steel surface so it snapped in and is flat again, but it's surrounded by crazy glue. I have a good feeling these probably won't fa fall out now. So one of the things I noticed here is the uh, servo, you know, how it moves. If you move it forward, it creates toe out. Whereas it's far back, it's relatively parallel. But if you move it forward all the way, it's going to actually hit the the lower shock mount, so it won't it won't actually steer. So be mindful. It's probably best to just keep it in more rear position. So now we're going to add a plate that keeps the battery from shifting back and forth. So it's this piece of plastic that mates to this piece of carbon, and I'm using these short screws. So these are the M2 by 3.5, and so they screw in like this and then it's gonna go in here it seems to be in front of these aluminum standoffs so like this okay and then it's going to get screwed in by the bottom. And there's only two of these left here. These are the uh, 1.5 by 5s. So these must slot in here. Alright, so it's the addition of these two. And these two is what helps. It keeps you know the back and the front aligned. Without those additional screws, you saw earlier that the whole thing shifted, right? So you have to have that. Okay, so. Now there's a couple extra parts here. I figured out what these three are. This one can bolt up here, and this will clip into the, a mini Z body. Okay. And then these are two additional uh, things that could go here, and then you can run posts up 
to a, to a body or something like that. This is the back one. This is a short version, but this is a, a wide version. So if you want to run different posts up to a, a body, you can with this. This is that extra part that you could use to sand and to screw up with. What I don't know is this is the last carbon piece. I have no clue what this is because it doesn't match up with any holes. It doesn't match up with these battery mount holes. It doesn't match up with these chassis slider holes. Oh, no, it doesn't match up with those two holes. So this is a bit of a mystery. I was looking back here and it doesn't match up with, it's wider than everything back here. So I, I have no clue what this is. So interesting. All right, so let's look at the extra parts. So there are some spares in case something breaks, like the end of a shock, you got one piece here. Um, you got six of the uh, control ball ends, which are nice. Right, and then you have an extra uh, suspension link that goes into those. You got a couple of long of these extra large screws for you know running different posts or whatever for the bumpers and stuff. Some uh, the more standoffs, the top of a shock right here. This I haven't talked about yet because I haven't installed the motor, and this is actually a big concern. This is for the pinion to the uh, the brushless motor, and. There's also three very tiny grub screws. I'll try to show you this. All right. So these three grub screws are supposed to probably hold this pinion on the the shaft of the motor. The problem is there are no holes on this thing. I don't see where I could possibly insert those three grub screws. So right now this is a friction fit but I highly doubt that would work. Right, so that's a bit concerning. We'll have to see what happens later on with when I install the electronics, which will be a different video. <coughs> There's an extra bearing here. Uh, some longer standoffs, a whole bunch of these short M2 screws, and then uh, one big, uh, big uh, brass insert, and like six or seven of the small ones, which leads me to believe that this company knows about this problem. I'm gonna guess that a lot of these brass uh, nuts fall out. I think this is a design flaw. It would have been so easily solved if they just had longer threads here and then you just capture it with a nut on the other side, right? If the if this had a flange wide enough to not fall through the hole. But uh, that's just me. All right, so obviously I'm gonna have to go and uh, adjust the suspension, you know, the cam, the toe out and all that stuff. This is all jacked up but uh, it's easily tunable, so that's good. And I have to go and tighten everything down because everything's pretty loose right now, right? Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully you guys learned from me discovering a lot of problems. You might need some extra uh, bolts, possibly spacers or extra washers. And then uh, I still don't know what's gonna happen with the pinion, so stay tuned and I'll do a different video. Thanks for watching, guys.